What's up my plant lovers, Devin is here back with another episode of Plant Vibes TV. Today we're going to be talking about another great ground cover. That would be the Winter Hardy Ice Plant. Um, Hardy Ice Plant is, it's one of my favorite ground covers because it creates a nice beautiful thick mat of foliage which tends to stay evergreen. And then you get beautiful flowers like this in basically uh, late spring, early summertime. Um, now, ice plant, hardy ice plant, it comes from a couple different uh, species of Delosperma. Uh, the two main hardy ice plant species being um, Delosperma cooperi or Delosperma nubid, uh, nubigium, I think is the pronunciation. And um, the cooperi is, you know, if you go out to California and you see large swaths of like the purple flowered uh, ice plant, that's probably going to be the Delosperma cooperi. And the Nubigium um, often has yellow or orange flowers. Now, many of the more modern hybrids, like the one I have right here, this is the Wheels of Wonder series. They're either going to be kind of hybrids, you know, cross between the two um, to get you a beautiful color range, or some of the more hardy ones will be hybrids of the Delosperma um, Nubigium. And um, typically the hardy ice plant, it's gonna be hardy down to zone five. I'm here in Eastern Pennsylvania, so this is uh, zone six B, I believe. So this is perfect um, for this area. Now I wanted to go through a few of the, like, the tips and tricks of getting this, of, of basically choosing where to plant this and kind of um, how to get it started and some of my tips and pra best practices for actually utilizing this around the garden. Um, so, as a ground cover, it stays really nice and short. So this is beautiful for putting along the kind of the fronts of the borders. Here you can see I'm lining my hot driveway um, and I've planted about a hundred of these little guys right around here. Now, one of the things that you'll note is that, okay, so my driveway runs down like this. So the, obviously the water comes this way and it flows this way and basically uh, leaves my garden via this tube and it kind of kind of leaves this whole little bank alone. Yeah, we'll definitely get the rainfall of course, but water never pools up here. That is hugely important. Ice plant does not want to have wet feet. Basically when we say wet feet, we mean it, if you look out in your garden and there's water pooling up in those areas, that's not where you want to be planting the ice plant. This needs really great drainage. Um, it, it wants to be in a place with a lot of sunlight for sure. Um, this gets pretty great sunlight throughout the day, um, kind of in the morning and in the afternoon. So this is a great spot. The soil is pretty pretty bad here, um, pretty rocky, also pretty clayy. And, um, but that's okay for the ice plant. The ice plant doesn't need to be in super rich soil. It needs to be in soil that is gonna dry out, which can be a little bit tricky for the clay um, during the wet months, but uh, it will dry out very fast in the summer months. So those are kind of the attributes that you really want to think about that needs to have great drainage, um, great sunlight, and um, those are pretty much the main things. Now what I love about the ice plant is it will create a beautiful thick mat and it will help to kind of stabilize areas that are prone to erosion. Out in California, you'll see beautiful banks or hillsides. Um, it's actually a lot of it's invasive out there, but it does help stabilize those kind of areas like those hills near, near the beach. Um, so it's invasive, but it does stabilize erosion. So it's kind of a pro and con situation. So now, you know, I'm a huge proponent of using ground covers because it really can help kind of transform um, the areas that are just kind of like just off the edges of hardscapes or of kind of more foot traffic -y areas. They're kind of that first entryway into the gardens. They're also great for solving kind of like problem areas. Um, right here, I really, you know, it's right near my septic area. So it's like, it's a hard spot to figure out what to do. And it also gets beating down with the sun. So that's why I chose to plant this here. And I think it should be a pretty great choice. It should also, um, once it really starts to fill out, it should also help keep the weeds at bay. Another reason why I love um, ground covers, you know, by planting uh, ground covers, you're, you're basically eliminating ground space for the weeds to grow. So it will definitely help with that. Um, I think that's great. Now, another thing that I absolutely love about 
um, ice plant in particular is because it is a succulent, is super drought tolerant. This is a plant where you can plant, you really don't really have to worry about watering it unless you live in like Arizona or Southern California where you're not getting like any precipitation for a whole month or something like that. Here in Pennsylvania, we get enough rainfall that I will never water this. I didn't water it once I planted it, um, and I will continue not to water it. I've planted it in a few different areas. I'll show you the other area I just got done planting a bunch. Uh, so it's a, a plant where you can plant away from you know water sources, and it's great. It really loves rocky areas, sloping areas. You can basically kind of tuck it into rock, in between rocks anywhere where you might have a lot of boulders or gravels, things like that. That's what I've done up towards the front of my garden. I'll show you in a minute, but all right. So I want to show you guys what I've been planting, how I've been doing it and do a quick planting demo just to get you a little bit more comfortable using ice plant in your gardens along your borders and edges. So you can see I've pretty much spaced them about, uh, I don't know, six to eight inches apart from one another, and that'll be perfect. Over the course of two seasons, they should really start to touch shoulders and fill in this entire area with their beautiful evergreen foliage. So by far my favorite way to plant them is if they're in like these small trays like this, this is the easiest way to plant them because the roots are really nice and easy. you can dig a small little hole, plant them right in, it's super fast. Um, you just use a like, tiny little hand shovel, hand trowel, and that's my favorite way for sure. But if all that you can find are big pots like this, or even, or even smaller ones like this, what you basically can do um, is just divide them real quick. It's super easy. Once you have them out of the pot, just take like any sort of um, straight edge shovel and just divide it. It's a piece of cake. So now you have brand new pieces just like this. And it's okay, tear them apart. If they're kind of stuck together, it doesn't matter. So as we remember from some of my previous videos, the key to knowing if your division has been a success is to note if there are roots coming out of the bottom. Every, every piece of division needs to have roots coming out of the bottom and growth coming out of the top. Those are the two requirements for a successful division, which each of those pieces definitely does. Um, so these are all gonna be successful once I plant them in there. It's really just as simple as digging a small little hole just like that. Take our small, nice little plant. Just kind of gently break up those roots. Pack it in. Perfect. And voila. They can take a little bit of manhandling, so if you have to kind of pack it in there, that's okay. Um, they're gonna not look great for the first two, three weeks, maybe even a whole month, but once they have, have had a chance to grow some roots, um, they'll start to fill out quickly. So it's really, it's really important, you know, the more roots that you can put into each little section, the better, absolutely. Um, but they're definitely one of my favorite ground covers very drought tolerant. Um, they love the full hot sun. They provide this beautiful evergreen foliage, flowers in the summertime. They're gonna help to keep the weeds at bay. They're awesome for erosion. They're perfect on slopes, rocky areas, graveled patches. You can just dig and plant it right in there. And um, those are some of the areas where I recommend growing your ice plant. Keep away from the areas that are uh, consistently wet, where water tends to pool up. Um, keep them away from shady areas as well. Uh, the Wheels of Wonder series that I'm using is my favorite because it has the best uh, carpeted, thick, dense matted forming, mat forming foliage, and it has really vibrant flowers. Hardy to zone five, so it's, a, a, you know, hardy for mo many gardens in um, the United States. So those are kind of the things that you need to keep in mind um, when you're planting ice plant. It is a fantastic, great 
ground cover. I'm gonna show you guys one more area where I uh, planted some up just today, um, give you a little bit more inspiration, and then you can go do a little searching, find some for yourself, and start thinking about where you wanna add it to your garden. Now, one last thing that I always do with all my new plants, especially ground covers that, that are like this, you need to put markers. Your gardeners, your, your lawn dudes, they might mow it back thinking it's just grass or weeds. So leave markers, tell them that plants with the markers are meant to remain, all right? So get some me nice metal white markers, put them around your plants, keep them protected. Okay, so up near the front of my garden, I just planted a lot more ice plant in here, along with a little bit of lavender. I know it looks a little bit, it looks kind of sad right now, and that's normal. That just is a little bit of transplant shock, but it'll start to get nice here in the next three, four weeks. Um, you can see it's just kind of this slope with these rocks and boulders, the lavender, hens and chicks. Those are some really nice uh, plants that some nice companion plants for the same sort of um, environment that these guys like. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video about Hardy Ice Plant, one of my favorite ground covers. It is an absolute gem to have planted in the garden when it's planted in the right places. Um, if you have any further questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any tips or advice you'd like to share with our fellow viewers, definitely leave those comments below as well. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you soon. Ciao.